Welcome to G5 Jumpstart presented by New Leader Manufacturing. I'm Josh Mo, product specialist for the Southeast United States, Maryland to Florida. To my left is Dave Baker, product specialist <coughs> for Wisconsin and Illinois. Today, we're going to be going through the G5 walk around and maintenance. So while our video plays, if you have any questions regarding this section, please feel free to, feel free to type them in on the lower right hand side of your screen. And with that, we're going to roll the video. Dave and I are going to be doing a walk around on this NL5000 G5 on this RBR chassis. This machine is set up in a multi bin configuration, so it handles four products. You can also get a 5000 as a single bin machine or a multiplier, which would be your dual bin machine. Starting at the front left hand corner, we have the new leader data plate, which is going to give you the model number of your machine, the length of the box, and most importantly, the serial number. The serial number is going to come in real handy if you need technical assistance over the phone from New Leader, or if you're working with your dealer to get the appropriate parts for the machine, you're going to need that serial number. Below that, you have the automatic chain oiler. This reservoir is going to hold 75% diesel fuel, 25% clean motor oil. It's got a pump on the backside that feeds two nozzles. They are no clogged nozzles, and they're going to lube that chain uh, based on the intervals that you have set up in the ISO interface. We recommend lubing this chain at the end of every day after you're done running, after you've cleaned the machine, let it run a couple revolutions in the belt. Um, and and what, we're, what we're trying to achieve with that is obviously lengthening the life of the chain and the belt. Um, it's, it's imperative that these things get oiled. Directly next to that, we have the first of two grease banks. So this machine only has the two grease banks. It has fewer grease points on it than a standard machine does. And the perk of these two grease banks is that they are built with line that is rated for high pressure. So you can run an electric grease gun, set it up on there, pump right into it, and not have to worry about whether or not you're gonna blow a line, okay? So then in front of that, we have our hydraulic cooler and tank assembly. So the cooler here is attached to a fan that's going to pull air through it. So naturally, because air is being pulled through it, there's going to be some debris buildup on the face of the cooler. You want to make sure that, that gets cleaned off. Don't pressure wash it because there's a danger of destroying these fins, but just make sure it gets cleaned off and, uh, and cleaned thoroughly. Once again, recommend not doing it at the beginning of the day because if that stays damp, you're just going to get debris to build up on there anyway. Um, like I said, on the back side, there's an electric fan that's going to come on between 115 and 120 degrees of hydraulic oil temperature. And uh, just want to make sure that that fan is pulling air. So if you can put your hand up there, you feel the air being pulled through. We know the fan's on. It's going to keep that oil nice and cool. The tank behind it here has three built in sensors, one for fluid temperature, one for fluid level and one for filter restriction. All of those can be monitored through the ISO uh, display. So you can see all that stuff from inside the cab, which is really nice. Um, down here, it's a little difficult to see, is one of our two automatic chain tension cylinders. When this machine sees hydraulic pressure, it's going to extend that cylinder to, to the predetermined amount to make sure that chain is nice and tight or tight enough. And then once, it, once the hydraulic pressure goes away, that cylinder is going to collapse some and it's going to hopefully lengthen the life of that belt over chain. Okay. So we recommend when it comes to servicing your hydraulic system annually, change the fluid in here. It should take about 24 gallons of hydraulic fluid, but drain this out annually, put fresh fluid in it uh, right there. Moving further down the machine, we're gonna come to the new liter mono block. The mono block is specific to the 5000 and the 4500. It's gonna house all the components to run the single bin. So you'll have two of your spinner, uh, spinner control valves, spinner PWM valve, I'm sorry. So they're going to control the individual spinners. Above that, you're going to have the control valve for your conveyor. It's also going to have multiple pressure transducers, one for system pressure and one for conveyor pressure that you can monitor from inside the cab. And it's going to have the valve for adjusting the automatic chain tension cylinders. So if the pressure ever needs to be increased or decreased or serviced on the automatic chain tension, it's done here at this block, okay? The next item down the side of the box is your G5 block. This is going to handle all of the swath control and also your hydraulic feed gate. So it'll, it has two coils and two cartridges for the left and right, two for the fore aft movement of the fan frame, and then it also has it for your main bin and your insert uh, hydraulic feed gate assembly. Now running back down the machine, you have all stainless steel lines that come to the rear. 
And then what we end up here with is the second of your grease banks. So once again, high pressure lines, you can run an electric louver to them. Uh, no issue there, but those will be your only two grease points on this machine. So you don't have to worry about finding or fighting and looking for grease zerks. It's, it's just going to be at these two points. Also down here, that little tiny cutout you're going to see is to check for conveyor chain tension. We want to see that the top of the chain is riding between the min and max on that uh, as the chain is moving. OK, so we check it with the chain moving and obviously hydraulic pressure and everything is engaged. To, to check that, you're going to use a small flashlight. Obviously, the hole is very small. We don't want you to put your finger or anything in there, but you can peek right in there and ensure that your pressure is set correctly by where the chain is running. And then to the back of the machine, we come up on the dual pinion gearbox. OK, as far as service goes with this, it takes a pint and a half of fluid. I recommend changing that yearly. And what a lot of people assume is that the center plug is where you fill to. If you fill to that, it's going to be over a pint and a half and you're going to end up overfilling this and having a leak through the seal on the inside of the box. We have we have formed stainless lines on the G5, which is really, really nice. And then if you decide to purchase the option, you can get stainless steel lines, the crimps, the fittings, etc. the whole way down. Uh, that is an option on G5. We all know that the back of this machine is going to get completely caked with garbage. So when it comes to cleaning back here, just like we said similarly to the front, we don't really want to see a lot of high pressure and primarily it's because we have a lot of electronic components. So if you're going to clean this, don't aim it directly at these components. Um, try not to use a lot of high pressure. We prefer volume uh, and uh, we don't want to see a lot of water getting into these parts. So this is where I'm going to pass it off to Dave. I hope this has been helpful for you all and Dave can take it from here. All right, we're on the right hand front corner of the machine here next to our module enclosure. It's going to house all of our modules that run our controller. It's also underneath the black plastic cap. There is going to be a fuse, a labeled fuse box. And if you take a look here, it's a little bit better view of our auto chain tensioning cylinder. Up above, we do have our controlled conveyor control valves for our second, third and fourth bin but the order of them would be two, four, three. All right, we're back at the back end of the machine here. The big differences between the G4 and the G5, you'll notice we no longer have a manual adjustment for our fore and aft for our profile fix on our spinners. This is going to be done from the cab set up in your profile, which Zach will go over in the controller training in a little bit. We do have the same style spinners this is quarter inch discs here four spinners per disc still coming out of the shop at a one two one two position make sure that if you change fins on these just like everything else you are going to need carbon steel hardware especially over the pickups that is a magnetic sensor for the uh, spinner speed on this you have a spinner speed sensor per side left and right so you're going to have uh, independent spinner speed control in the cab our sections are going to be a movement of side to side of 11 inches left, 11 inches right. It's all going to be done from this cylinder right here, and all these cylinders have internal sensors. We're keeping fertilizer out of the sensor assembly. The cylinders also have stainless steel rods, so we don't see corrosion on those. Underneath our spinner here, this is all open now, and we have the ability to clean this out. So. Make sure we are washing these uh, and taking care of any debris that would be up in here. We do not want to grease our fore aft rod or our tube for our side to side shift. Those, those are not a greasable item. We're actually just gonna draw in more debris that way. I'm gonna go over our sections and kind of how they work here. First thing I need to do is take off the back plate of our material divider set it off to the side. So as I said, we're moving left and right with the G5 spinner frame. Uh, when we move left, we're going to spread right. We're going to come into contact with this and we're going to start shutting down our sections. Kind of easier to see this way. If you do have a situation where you want to go out and spread a little bit of lime, you can lock 
You can disengage your G5 ability, your section of control ability of your spinner in the controller. You can come back here, you can take your back plate off, and this vane assembly has to come out. You have pins on the side, drop down handles, and pull it out of the back end there. We also want to make sure we don't have buildup inside this vane assembly. So you want to check that periodically. You also still want to be checking the face of your material divider for buildup. A lot of times I see it in the corners on either side, and buildup on the fins is something we want to watch out for. AMS has that ability to get a little bit uh, liquid uh, or juicy, I guess you would say. And the face of those fins can get coated pretty thick. So we want to make sure we have some way to clean those off. I will now kind of go over some of the electronics at the back end. This is our main vent encoder for our conveyor on this side. And then we have our encoders for all our second, third, and fourth bin there. The motors for your second, third, and fourth bin are all on the right hand side. Okay, guys, one thing on our second bin conveyor. You guys may know this. This is now a 409 stainless steel uh, chain link. Uh, so you do not have to oil it as regularly as the main conveyor. I would suggest putting some fluid film on it from time to time to make sure you are getting some sort of lube on that chain. But measurement on that would be from uh, the back sill, which you can see up above here, inside the insert, the chain needs to be touching inside that sill anywhere from 30 to 34 inches. Measure that off with a tape or make yourself a little uh, quarter inch rod that you can put in there. One thing with the G5 that is a little bit different than the G4 is we do want a certain amount of play in this, tolerance in this right here. So this fan frame, all, all these pieces are self-centered. You no longer have to go through the squaring process on this, but you do need about an eighth inch of play right there on the back end. There are adjustment bolts up and underneath, which I can show you right now. These two adjustment bolts right here on this plate are slotted at an angle to tighten or loosen the tolerance on the spin on the G5 spinner frame. In front of that is a three quarter inch bolt that is hand tight, uh, more of a fine tune adjustment. But this is where you're going to tighten or loosen the G5 tolerance. Okay, we're back live. Uh, Dave Baker here with Josh Moe. There's a few things in the video that we probably should have got questions on, which we'll address here in just a second. Uh, but the one question we did get is what kind of oil in the gear case, and that is 80, 90 weight oil. Once again, make sure you're measuring that out, not using the center hole as a site, as a fill gauge for it. Uh, one of the things in the video you may have, may have uh, heard was I accidentally called the fin spinners. Uh, just wanted to address that before uh, anybody said anything outside of here about it. So the other thing I want to go over is fin placement. There are certain situations where we will move these fins. They will come out of the shop in a one, two, one, two position. One all the way forward, alternating to one in the middle, one all the way forward, one in the middle. Uh, you can move those to achieve a better profile in certain situations. Please call your dealer and have, have them call us to help with that. That being said, the other thing we've done here is we've moved our, our G fan, G5 fan frame over to the right to show kind of on top here where you get access to changing the bushings if that comes to that situation. Uh, changing those bushings is needed after a, a certain amount of time when you run out of adjustment on our three quarter inch bolt, which we showed a picture or we got a video of in the walk around video. Uh, that being said, Josh wants to cover a couple things here on the back end also, so I'll let him take over. All right, thanks, Dave. So over time, uh, you'll get some buildup on this sh on this shield here. So what you want to do in this scenario is try to keep this thing as clean as possible. You can slide the fan frame over using the fan frame testing function in the controller. 
and get in there. Um, you could even do it from the, the center position. But what I'm talking about is between this piece and this piece here, fertilizer can get jammed up in there and we want to get that out. So get in there with the hose, clean that stuff out, make sure it, it, there's, there's free range of motion left and right on that fan frame and uh, just do your best to keep that clean. The other thing we wanted to talk about is just, uh, you know, in the scenario that something gets bent up back here, maybe you, you fall into a hole, you back into a tree or a pole, something like that. You know, we need to make sure uh, to be as accurate as possible with this fan frame that, that these components are working and functioning the way they should. So if you get something that gets twisted or bent up, uh, get it replaced because you don't want the end result to be a streaked field or a problem with the machine. One thing I need to go over too is fin replacement. Uh, fin replacement, we used to have a 10 foot rule, 10 foot away, you could, if you started seeing scales in the fins, time to replace. We wanna actually come up, feel the face of the fin now. And uh, if you get, if you're feeling indentations in those spinner uh, fin faces, we need to make sure we're replacing those fins. That can also cause streaks in the field. Looks like we got a question about conveyor replacement. Uh, conveyor replacement, I guess I don't know the full body of the question, but essentially you wanna make sure you're, like we said, you're oiling that chain at the end of every day. And if you need to replace the chain, obviously all this on the back end has to come out. If you have a multi-bin, you also have to pull out your chute assembly. And if you're replacing the insert conveyor itself, the, the uh, metering wheel assembly would need to come out also. Right. Typically, what guys will do is they will hook the new chain to the current chain. You'll run around till you get your splice at the back end, take your splice apart, uh, pin your new chain to the old chain, and run your conveyor through. You will have in an off, if the, when the machine's off, you won't have any hydraulic pressure on those cylinders at the front end. So you should be able to pull all the way through and get your new conveyor installed that way. I hope that answers that question for you guys. Uh, Josh, do you have anything else? Um, no, I mean, you know, the, with, with, well, let me see. so just to reiterate, we talked about this in the video, we've talked about it here. You know, the big focus with keeping this machine running is, is cleanliness. Keep it clean. Um, give it a bath every once in a while, keep it oiled, keep it lubricated, et cetera. And we got another question. Um, it's about, it's regarding fenders. Uh, so fenders are OEM specific options. Some machines will come with them. Some will not come with them. You really want to talk to your dealer about which option you can get for the machine you're interested in. Um, it, it, it does come down to safety. Obviously you can tell on the RBR it has it. Certain other machines won't have it. Um, but it's going to be an OEM spec type item. So just work with your dealer, figure out what options they have for the given machine you're looking at. Um, but besides that, we hope this has been beneficial. We hope it's been helpful. Um, if you have any further questions, work with your dealer, contact your dealer. Um, and uh, we, hope, uh, we hope the rest of the day is beneficial as well. Thank you.